What is going on guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. This one is the long-awaited Subway Surfer tutorial. In our case, it's going to be called Subway Skater. We are actually in um, some kind of, we could say Antarctica, and we're just running around with a penguin. And um, yeah, it is a really long-awaited tutorial. We've been working on it for quite a while. As you can see, we have some art as well. Uh, all the art is going to be for free. They are included on the website. You'll see the links in the description. We'll talk about it in a moment. But before we get into all that kind of stuff, I'd like to just uh, tell you the rule, the, actually, the, how we're going to be releasing this tutorial to the world. So this tutorial is going to be released for free on YouTube at the rate of one video every two days. It's going to be videos of around 10 minutes and they're going to be wrapped in a playlist. Of course, we're releasing the video with a two-day interval. This is just to help us on YouTube grow because of the YouTube algorithm. If we release right away like the whole tutorial, we don't win in the long run. We're trying to maximize the amount of time we show up on the YouTube algorithm. So um, please don't ask for the next tutorial right away because they might they might not even be done. So this also gives us time to just catch up with the videos and make them um, you know, over the course of the two or three next week, depending on how long this takes. So this is what is gonna go down. Of course, if you enjoy this at any time, make sure you support us by leaving likes in the video, leaving comments, all that kind of stuff helps us. It helps grow the channel and we can just keep on making that stuff. Eventually, we'll be able to do it full time. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to this, and we're going to jump right into the tutorial. Now, if you already figured out your whole hard direction and you already have all your models, that's also fine. But for those of you who don't, we do have some assets for free that you can find on n3k.ca and then the hashtag download, the pound sign, yeah, pound sign download. Um, we are going to be using the asset for the Subway Skater artwork right here. If you click on this, you will receive a Unity package in your download folder if you're using Windows. Let's actually open this up while our engine is up, and you're going to see that we have quite a few things in here. So we have a material, a texture, basic stuff, a bunch of FBX for the assets, a character with some animations, and some prefab just to wrap all of these together. So let's go ahead and import all of this in our project. And we are going to just start setting up things a little bit so we can work, uh, you know, we can work with this. Right, so I am going to unpack this Subway Surfer um, asset pack basically and just put it directly in my project just like this. I might reorganize things a little bit. Um, if you want to follow along with the tutorial, maybe you should do the same. So what I like to do is have my artwork folder and inside of it, I put all of my art. So not just the texture in it. I'll create a new folder for that. Let's call that uh, material and texture, depending on what you want to call it. I'll put that in here. Character as well, the character animation inside of the character folder, and the asset inside of here. Okay, so we just rearranged our artwork folder. Now, let me go ahead and create some new folders. One for the script. We're going to be scripting quite a lot. Another one for the scene. We might have at least, actually, we might only have one scene now that I think about it, since in Subway Surfer, the, the actual menu scene is part of the game scene, so that's something quite cool we're going to see in the future. And um, finally, let's add another one for, oh, we actually already have prefab. You know what? Let's leave it like that for now. All right, so we have these four folders. We are going to go ahead and start just looking at what is inside of our project at the moment. But before we go any further, I'm going to save this scene, so Control and S, and I'm going to call this Gym. So this is going to be our test scene, this is going to be where we put things and just have a look at them, like see if they work um, by themselves, and then we're going to be importing them into the game scene. So now that it's saved, I'm going to drag and drop it right into the scene folder. And let's actually start laying down some assets, just to have a look at them. I will right click and create a new 3D object. Add a plane and just center it at 0, 0, 0. I'm also going to make it a little bit bigger, actually a lot bigger. And we are going to start dropping some assets in here so you have a look at what we have. Right, so I'm not going to be using, actually I am going to be using, oh never mind, I'm not going to be using the assets by themselves because this is the actual mesh that comes in. They look fine but uh, we'll want to be using the prefabs. So the first one we have is a very nice bear, just chilling over here. We have then a block, which is going to be useful for the gameplay. Let's put that in the scene. 
So those are going to be the equivalent of the trains um, that you see in Subway Surfer. And I don't know if I should leave the lighting on right now so we can see a little bit better. But um, as you can tell, the color is pretty duotone. So we're going to have something that has a lot of white. Next up, we have a blocker. So this is um, one of the items that actually slide under. So we're going to be sliding under this. A, um, a bush, which is actually just a big rock, we could call it. This is something we're going to um, jump over. Now this one is a little bit scaled uh, in a weird manner. We might scale it down a little bit later, maybe 0 0.5. This way our character can jump on over it. Or it can just block the way. We'll see then. Then cabin, just for some art on the sides, can be always useful. And then we have coin, cross, diamond. Let's put them all at the same time. Those are just um, items you're going to be seeing during the game. So we have the cross the coin, and the diamond. Some simple stuff. We're probably going to be adding some particle effect around that. Um, and then we have some glaze here. Again, that's for the background. We will definitely be scaling these up in the future, so we can have something like this. Or, you know, something to actually create um, the sides you see on Subway Surfer. So you always have your track in the middle, but on the sides, there is always some kind of environment going on, and they really nail it good. So we're going to try and create something off um, the items we have. Some more glaciers, some more icebergs. And then we have some igloos. Again, same thing. That's going to be for the sides. Might need a little bit of rescaling compared to this cabin. Again, and a log, which is going to be um, just a different item that is going to be acting as another train, basically. So these are going to be the same ex exact height and they're going to have the same collider. We're going to be using them for gameplay. And then after that we have ramps. In Subway Surfer you always have ramps to go up. Same thing here, this one is made out of ice and this one is made out of wood. Next up in the artwork folder we have the character right over here um, that we'll want to actually just import in our game and start setting up because we are going to be playing with him quite a lot. Um, it is a Pingu. I like to call it Pingu, you can call it a Pinguini, a Penguin, whatever you want. It's a bird. And um, let's just put it in here and actually have a look at him. So, simple. It is quite small as you can tell, so um, it's going to be perfect for our gameplay. We'll want to be running up these kind of thing here and he can't be... Uh, he can't jump high enough to reach this thing on his own, so he's going to have to take those ramps every time. Right, so this Pengu right here, it does come with some animation that are going to be used during the gameplay. So let's have a look at them and start setting him up for our very first episode of this Subway Skater. Alright, so under Prefab over here, I'm going to create another folder just to order things up. Um, this is going to be Assets, this is going to be... Yeah, let's just call it Assets for now. And put all of these inside of Assets. Now I'm going to create another one, another folder for this very specific player. And I'll create another um, prefab on top of that. So let's drag this SS Pengu under player. And let's rename him player. I'm going to make sure I delete this one so I don't keep the reference of the other prefab. So I don't mess anything, basically. And let's drag and drop this fresh new player in here. Might want to clean up the values just a little bit. Hit apply. Let's have a look at him. And we are going to go ahead and create an animator. So I'll create another folder yet again um, called animation. Inside the animation folder, I'm going to create a animator controller. So again, yet again, right click, create animator controller. This is going to be our player um, state machine for the animation. So let's click on him. Under the animator, you're going to choose player. If you don't have animator right here, go under add component, type in animator, but it should be there if the prefab was imported properly. So we have this now, let's double click on player. And this is our very nice state machine for the player. Let's go ahead and right click in here, anywhere really, and create some new states. Now I just actually learned that today, you don't actually have to create states for every single one of your animation. This is what I would have done but um, as you can tell we have all animation right here I would say so this new state right here it could be jump and then you just put the motion jump in here same thing for all the other one but apparently what you can do 
is simply find your animation in your folder. In our case, it's under artwork, character, character animation, and you can just drag and drop them right in here. And it's going to create them all. So that's definitely a big time saver for me. And uh, hopefully it's something new for you as well. Else I'm just stupid. So, all right. Um, for this first episode, let's just quickly have a look at all the states. So we're going to create a state machine that just goes through everything basically. So let's go with the idle and then move on to say a jump to a slide and then we'll finish with a run. Actually slide, def and then run. Currently our default animation is def so let's right click on idle and set as layer default state. This way as soon as the game starts or as soon as the pengu is enabled it is going to go straight to idle and then we're going to right click on idle, add a transition to jump, add a transition to slide, then to def, then to run. And hopefully this one is on loop so you can keep on running at the end. Um, actually no, none of our animations are on loop right now so we're gonna have to fix that together. You see all of those animations right here, we can choose them one by one and make sure it has a loop time. Very important that you do that to animation that actually needs a loop. In that case, def doesn't need a loop, idle does need one, so let's click on loop time, hit apply, jump does not need one, run does need a loop time, and slide, um, let's actually put a loop time on slide. We're going to cancel it when we need to. Alright, so with all of that done, I'm going to move this right here as well, so we can have um, a look at both scenes and maybe even move the camera right in front of it so we can have a look. There we go. Back in the animator, let's press play and hopefully everything runs smoothly. So it's playing at idle right now as you can tell and then into a jump and definitely nothing is working so definitely something's going wrong with this. What am I doing wrong? Alright, so I'm having a little bit of trouble getting this one to work, probably because I did rename the, um, the bones one by one in here. So what I'll do is I actually go fetch the original mesh, and uh, technically this should be fixed in the package you've download. Um, but I'm just going to, in case it's not, uh, let's just go ahead and under assets, find the SS Pingu, which is the original mesh, and let's drag and drop it right here in the game. We're going to apply the, where is it at, the um, material on it, so go under material, and use the atlas texture material. Drag and drop this right on top of him. And in case you haven't wondered um, yet, all of these items over here, they all use the same exact texture and material, which means we're going to be saving quite a lot on the computer power of our little device, our phone device, and also the texture is only 32 by 32, so we're using this texture and it powers the whole game, uh, which is quite cool to be honest. Now, let's go back. We have the SS Pingu, the one that isn't, um, that has the Mixamo naming in there. Let's actually keep it, call it player, and we're going to overwrite what we had before. So where is my other prefab? Um, under prefab player, we're going to overwrite it by simply drag and dropping it on top of player. We're going to hit replace anyway, and then we should have our animation. If we go under player, and then put our player animator controller, we hit play, it should actually play all our animations. So here we go, that's the scene view, this is the idle, that's the jump, that's the slide, which is actually quite long, <laughs> and the def animation. Finally, we're going to end up with the running animation in loop. So this is what we're going to be looking at during the whole game. A penguin that just goes around like this, and sometimes he jumps, sometimes he does stuff. Who knows? Can we actually do that here? Sweet. Okay, so. We are actually going to be ending this episode right here today. We have um, a lot of work ahead of us, but just make sure you download the package. The package just make sure you start uh, laying down this little state machine right here, so we can actually just jump into it. We're going to start uh, developing all the movement mechanic around the player, and then we'll work on spawning the whole level, which is going to be a real challenge. But uh, guys, that's actually all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the next video. It should pop up on the screen right here for the rest of the series. Every video after the one you're watching basically should pop up at the end of the series. You can click on it and head directly to the other video. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the Patreon page if you wish to support us. Check out the, the website if you'd like to have some services and the Facebook page to catch up with our update. Alright guys, I'll catch you in the next one.